Hello everybody, welcome and welcome back to my channel and welcome to week three of Spoopathon. So week three, this is the first week where I feel positive. I'm feeling good, I'm feeling happy, I feel like I'm going to get a lot of reading done this week. So um, I'm picking up this vlog clip immediately after I close off week two and uh, at the end of week two I am in the middle of The Bane Chronicles by Cassandra Clare which is the short story collection about Magnus Bane in the Shadowhunters world. I am currently 235 pages in so this week I definitely need to try and finish this so that I can get started on the wave three prompts because I would like to try and finish a lot of the wave three prompts before wave four starts um, because obviously at the very start of the month they got really unwell and I fell behind a little bit and also because I was reading fairy tale and it took so long for me to finish <laughs> I just got really behind and so I feel like I'm playing catch up now so we're going to be finishing off this book first before I can move on into the wave three prompts I can't remember all of them off the top of my head but two that really stand out to me are graphic novels so I've got three graphic novels that I'd like to read this week for that prompt the first one is Mooncakes which is by Wendy Shu, Susan Walker and Jomette Gill and this is a little fantasy graphic novel comic-y thing about I'm guessing like a witch and a werewolf. I don't know too much about it and I like to go into things a little bit blind so that I'm surprised and delightfully you know well I don't know what's going on basically so that's one I would like to read this week. I would also really like to read Delicates by Brenna Thumler which is the sequel to Sheets which I read right at the end of September so that is another one I would like to read as well and then also kind of not fitting with the spooky theme but it's just come out. Laura Olympus Volume 3 by Rachel Smythe. I love Laura Olympus so much and this came at the beginning of last week so I do really want to read it as soon as possible. I'm really really hoping that this edition is printed properly because my edition of Volume 2 is printed out of order and it was a little bit weird to read so I'm really hoping that this is or Gucci. <laughs> so that is another one I would like to read this week. And then one of the other prompts was Ghostly White. I think it was the colour prompt for this week. And the main book I've got that would fit that prompt is Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. So I would like to make this my main novel of the week that I'm planning to read. Because it's got like a funky layout, um, the text is quite big because it looks like an Ikea catalogue. I feel like it's going to be a relatively quick read. However, I won't be taking this book with me to and from work. I do a lot of my reading while I'm commuting and on my lunch break. So I won't be taking this book around with me because it's kind of big and awkward to carry around in my bag. I'm hoping to read quite a lot of it during the week but most of that reading will be done when I'm at home. So this week is definitely going to be a week where I make time specifically to read just so I can get through all of the thousands of books that I want to read this week. One of the other prompts was also Dark Academia so a perfect book to start this week would be Babel by R. F. Kuang. However I I do still really want to read this book. I don't want to read it this month because I feel like it's going to put me into a little bit of a reading slump because it's so long and so dense and although I do think I'm going to enjoy it I just I don't want to lose momentum especially after I felt a bit slumpy reading fairy tale so I don't think I'm going to read that this month anymore and then the other books I've still got on my TBR are House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland and Mina and the Slayers by Amy McCaw and I do really really want to get to this one. Hopefully maybe the start of wave four the prompts might fit this one in particular and I could get through these two books as well because I feel like they're going to be quite quick reads, they're young adults so it's a little bit easier to kind of process for the brain. I'm just having a quick look at my shelves as well to see if there was anything else on my TBR that I wanted to read. Oh yeah, I I didn't mention it in my TBR video, but I would also really like to read Spells for Forgetting by Adrienne Young. This was the adult fairy loot book for September and it's quite witchy. So I feel like it would be perfect for October. So that's another one I would also like to try and read before the end of the month as well. So that's the plan for the week then. I need to finish Bane Chronicles, which is one of my longer books of this month. So to get this out of the way would be very good. And then for my three graphic novels and horror store to top it all off as well. I feel like it's going to be a pretty good week. I've also got sprints again this week. Have I? When have I got sprints again? 
I, th I think I was originally doing sprints on Friday, but I've had to change it. So I'm doing sprints on Saturday, which is the, obviously the start of next week. So I don't have any sprints this week, technically. But Tori has invited me on her sprints today. I'm going to see if I have time to do that. I've got a few things I need to get done today. I need to edit a video that's supposed to go up on Tuesday. And I'd also like to start editing the vlog from last week as well. So it's ready to go up at the end of this week. And so I need to get that done. I feel like I need to film a video to go up the week after next, but I don't know if I'm going to do that this today or tomorrow. I completely forgot as well. I've got some things going on in my life this week. Tomorrow I'm going out for brunch with my dad's side of the family. And then on Wednesday, I'm going to a concert in Birmingham, which is really exciting. Um, I'm going to see, well, the concert is Wargasm, but I'm going to see one of the support acts, which is Scene Queen, who is an artist I have become obsessed with recently. I love her music. She's described as bimbo core, which is basically like feminist screamo. I absolutely love it. I really recommend checking her out. So I will obviously try and get some clips of the two things that I'm doing this week to show you guys in the B-roll. But yeah, that's really exciting. So Obviously it'll cut into my reading time, but I usually don't get much reading time on a Wednesday night anyway. I will have to wait like an hour for the bus home from work anyway. So I have a half day at work on Wednesday. I've booked off the afternoon so that I can make sure I get enough time to go to Birmingham. Let's get on with the morning. Uh, I mean, it's, it's like half past 12 anyway, so I haven't already lost the entire morning. Um, yeah, we're going to go and start editing, get some lunch and hopefully get some reading done today. Hello everyone, it is Sunday. Um, I'm all dressed up because I went out for breakfast with my dad's side of the family this morning. I didn't get any footage of it, I was just having too much of a good time to you pull my phone out. But I've left my book downstairs as well, so this is a little bit of a reading update. Last night I read quite a lot of The Bane Chronicles by Cassandra Clare. I've nearly finished it, I think I've got about 100 pages to go and I was considering staying up to finish it last night, but um, it was quite late and I thought it would be best to go to sleep because I had to get up this morning to go out. But I've got a few of the stories left. They're mostly the ones that are kind of set around the time that the Mortal Instruments takes place now. I really, really like the Raphael one, Saving Raphael Santiago. I really liked that one. And I quite liked the ones as well that were before and after that, that would kind of all take place in New York. And I've also really liked the ones that were in London as well. Um, so there's most of them really. But I, I am quite enjoying it and um, I definitely think I'm going to try and finish it today. I'm going to film my tbr video for next month now because i need to film it so that i've got enough time to edit it and everything so i'm going to be doing that and then i do need to do a bit of editing but it's, it's it is getting on now it's quite late in the afternoon so i'm gonna have to like get a wriggle on if i want to do some reading <laughs> ro has got a patreon watch long tonight we're watching um the rocky horror picture show and my best friend's exorcism but i think i'm going to end up giving those a miss just because there's some other stuff that I'd like to get done. And I, I kind of do just want to read tonight, to be honest. So that's from tomorrow. I can kind of get started on my Wave 3 TBR. So yeah, I am doing some changes with the TBR scrolls from next month. I'm kind of trialling it with this next one. And I'm going to see how I get on. And then if this trial works, I'm going to do this from like next year. I don't know if my TBR video will be up before this one or after. Basically, I'm going to do bi-monthly instead to try and let me have more time to mood read because I found this year that I do quite like, I like playing my TBR game. I just don't like having a set TBR every single month that doesn't really give me much space to mood read. And I found as well that like the books I was sort of picking for my TBR game, I just wasn't that excited about them or you know whatever so i think if i do it bi-monthly but with more roles then at least i have two months to kind of get through the tbr and um it also gives me space to mood read so we're going to trial it november december and see how i get on and then from january hopefully that'll be how i do it from now on um i'll still be doing monthly tbr videos but like the month that i don't play the game it'll just kind of be whatever's left over and then whatever i'm in the mood to read that month as well especially because i feel like i've had books for tbr scrolls and i've had like book club books as well that i want to read and then i just have no space to mood read anything at that point because i can only kind of manage between like 
five and eight books a month on average I guess and if I'm doing four TBR scrolls books then that kind of takes up a lot of my time and then anything on top of that that's like a book club book club. so I just feel like I, I don't have a lot of space for mood reading and I could reduce the roles again but I feel like if, if I reduce them anymore then it's kind of like what's the point of playing the game so we're, we're gonna up the roles and just make it bi-monthly and and we'll see how how I get on I'm hoping it works for me because I love playing my TBR game and people enjoy watching those videos as well so I, I want to do it but I don't want to do it just for the sake of it and then not actually read the books that I set and some people have said before as well like you could just refilm it if you don't like the roles you get but I it just feels too cheaty for me even though like you you guys would never know if I'd done the roles more than once but I just yeah I don't know it just feels too wrong <laughs> to do that so I'm gonna go and film that now and see what I get hopefully they're good I think the main problem is some of the prompts that I came up with last year I thought were really good at the time and now I'm a bit like I really wish that I hadn't done them. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna go and do that and then hopefully get some reading done. Hello my darlings, it is Monday and I have finally finished The Bane Chronicles by Cassandra Clare. So this concludes my Wave 2 books for Spoopathon. Again, I've written down which prompts I was going to use it for but I can't remember what they are off the top of my head but this will get me to the end of wave two so now I can start wave three. I haven't rated it just yet but I think it's sitting somewhere between a four and a five star read. I really really enjoyed it. It's just there's always something with the Shadowhunters books that doesn't quite hit the five star mark for me. I don't know if it's the writing style or just the fact that it's like YA but I'm just not as into it as I would like to be. It's never quite like hitting the favourite zone even though I do really enjoy it. I have enjoyed most of the stories in this especially the ones that visit characters we know and love from the series. There are a couple of short stories as well that focus on Magnus and Alex's relationship and I really really loved those and then there is one final story at the end which is the voicemail of Magnus Bane and it's just a bunch of different people calling Magnus and leaving voicemails on his phone and um that one was also quite funny but also like really sad as well but yeah I really 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 did enjoy it um I've loved getting to know Magnus a little bit more and knowing more about his past and also about how his relationship with Alec has like kind of developed and all the loves that he's had throughout his life as well. I can't remember which prompts I use it for Gothtober or for Royal Readathon either <laughs> which is really bad. I will talk about like points and stuff I think properly in my wrap up next month because I'm keeping a track of it in my phone but I don't look at that before I do an update and then I can't look at it at the moment. And I don't want to write it down anywhere else just because it's easy to do it while I'm on my phone. So yes, that's for the end of wave two for Spoobathon. So I can finally move on into my wave three TBR. I've just done a poll on Twitter for my trick or treat book. So that will fulfill the trick or treat prompt and also the poll. I think that one was a bonus prompt. Um, so that will pick that one. And that is the book that I'm going to read while I'm at work, like commuting and on my break and stuff. But tonight I'm planning to start Horror Store, which is a like haunted house book by Grady Hendrix that is about a haunted Ikea. And it's really cool because it's set up like an Ikea catalog. It has diagrams. It obviously is an oversized book. Yeah, I'm very excited to, to read it. Um, I've never read from Grady Hendrix before but this was the book that got me intrigued in his writing because of the formatting of it. But I'm going to read this of an evening and when I'm at home just because it's a bit awkward for me to take to and from work because of the size of it. So this is the book I'm going to be reading at home and then my trick or treat book I will read on my commute and stuff. Um, I'm not going to reveal what they are just yet, the books that I put on that poll. We'll wait and see what the results of the poll are um, and then I'll reveal to you guys what they are even though <laughs> it doesn't really matter because yeah shall I just show I'll just show you guys <laughs> here's me being all dramatic and I'm just going to show you anyway so the trick or treat books I've chosen are these two graphic novels um so Mooncakes is the treat book because this is the one that I'm most excited to read out of the two but also I feel like it's a bit of a play on the treat because it's called Mooncakes um so this one is about a witch and a wealth I think who 
fact, let me read you the blurb instead of trying to make up what it's about. One fateful night, teen witch Nova Huang follows reports of a white wolf in the woods and discovers her childhood crush, werewolf Tam Lang, battling a horse demon. Now, against the background of a slowly rekindling romance, Tam and Nova must investigate the dark supernatural forces eager to claim wolf magic for evil. Okay, it sounds really cool. Um, so a little bit of a pl fantasy plotline in there, a little bit of a romance as well. So I'm very intrigued to read this one. And then my trick book is Delicates by Brenna Thumler, which is the sequel to Sheets. And um, it's not that this is a trick necessarily because I don't want to read it, but I'm just not as excited about it as the other one. Um, also, it's a bit longer as well. Um, so this is the follow up to Sheets, obviously, which follows this girl who is kind of running her family's laundry after her mum has died and her dad is like really depressed. Um, and she kind of has to just keep it afloat by herself basically. And she meets a little ghost called Wendell who is kind of making things a little bit more difficult for her because he keeps causing havoc by accident. And then eventually the two of them become friends. Um, so yeah, I, I am intrigued to read this. I'm intrigued to see what is going to happen next. However, I do feel like the first book was a story in its own it didn't necessarily need a sequel so um, I'm interested to see what's going to happen in this and how the story is going to continue considering how the last one was kind of very final and a very good conclusion but yeah so this is the trick book so we will see what the public decides on which one I'm going to read next. I do plan on reading both of them this week. I was going to put Lore Olympus as the treat book but then I remembered that that is a big hardback and that will be too awkward for me to try and take to work because of the exact same reason I don't want to carry horror story around with me because it's an oversized book plus Lore Olympus is a hardback so it'll be really heavy. So yeah I'm going to start this tonight and then we'll see what gets picked for the trick or treat book and then I will start that. <laughs>
Thursday. So we've got one more day, well, two more days left of this week. It's Thursday morning. Um, if my voice is a bit weird, it's because I went to the Scene Queen Wargasm gig last night. Uh, I had a fan bloody tastic time. Uh, I booked the afternoon off work so I would have enough time to come home, get changed and then go out again. Uh, and it's a good thing I did that because I left work at 1pm and I got into Birmingham at 4. So if I had left work at 5, I wouldn't have got into Birmingham probably until about 8pm. So I would have missed most of the gig, to be honest. Uh, so I'm glad that I booked the afternoon off. I'll probably do that more in the future. I usually book the whole day off work but I'm starting to think I don't need to do that. It, you know, it's, it is kind of nice to just like get up when you want, not have to worry about going into work and stuff, but I don't know, we'll, we'll see. I, it depends obviously on how much holiday I have in general, I guess, but I will be booking more afternoons off in the future, I think. I have another gig next week, which is the Pretty Reckless. It's on a Sunday though, fortunately, um, so I don't have to worry about that, but I'm gonna have to get up to go to work the following morning and that's gonna be a struggle. <laughs> I can't wait for that. So the gig itself was great. The, the main band was Wargasm, but I have not listened to any of their music before last night. I mainly went for Scene Queen, who was the second support act, and she was so good. I got there really early. I got there about 10, well, I, I got into Birmingham at four and I had some dinner. I went to McDonald's <laughs> and then I walked over to the venue and when I got there, it was about 10 to five and I didn't go right up to the venue, but I could see that there was probably no one there, maybe a couple of people. And I thought I like to be early so I can kind of get near the front but this was too cringe. So I went to the Wetherspoons that was around the corner near Gay Village and had a, a drink in there um, before I went and got in the queue. And I still, when I went back to go to the queue, it was about half past five. So it was still pretty early, still quite a long wait. Doors went till seven, but I was quite near the front of the queue. So that was good. But waiting in the cold was not fun. I, I had to rethink my outfit um, yesterday because it was really windy when I left work and I thought it's going to be freezing when I'm waiting outside. So I'm going to have to rethink my outfit. I wanted to wear a skirt and some funky tights, but I chose to wear jeans instead, which was a good choice. And um, I wore my denim jacket, that one, and put a hoodie underneath it. And that was fine. I was not too cold. I brought Beanie with me as well to mainly stop the wind blowing my hair everywhere. So I was waiting in the queue and I really needed to pee uh, after about half an hour and it was getting bad. And when they'd opened doors at seven, they had to let in the accessibility queue first, which is fine. But then they took so long to start letting my queue in. And I was like, please just let me in. I really need to go to the toilet. While I was in the queue, I was debating whether or not I should just go straight to the front or if I should just go to the loo and hope for the best. I had to go to the loo. And sorry if this is TMI, it was the longest piss in the entire world. I'm so glad that I decided to go because I probably would have wet myself if I'd have waited until after the show. But when I came out the bathroom, there was still space right at the front. So I went and was at the barrier, which I haven't been barrier for a gig in so long. So it was great. I was like, I can't believe I've managed to get barrier. There was this girl next to me who was like, um, my boyfriend and my friend will be coming in a minute. They've just been held up in the queue because he had like a huge rucksack that you obviously can't take into a gig. I don't know what he was thinking. I was like, yeah, okay, that's fine. I don't know if she thought I was gonna move for them because I definitely wasn't gonna be doing that. Like, it's not my fault they've been held up in the queue. I am here, this is my spot. I'm staying here until I want to leave. <laughs> Please respect gig etiquette. Then the gig started, the first band came on, Knife Bride. They were really good. I've not heard of them before, but they were really, really good. They were a really small band from the UK. Um, they've got a fantastic stage presence, so I'll definitely be checking them out more. I checked them out on Twitter after um, the show and they have like 58 followers or something. They were really good. I moved to the back of the room after seeing Queen because it was really warm and I thought I'm not that fussed about Wargasm, so I would like someone else to be able to be a barrier for them. But she was like their favourite band. So I went to the back and Knife Bride were out there merch table and I wanted to go and say hello but I was really shy I went really really shy so, so I, I didn't I just kind of stood awkwardly near them and just kept looking at them and you know just pretending that I was interacting <laughs> but I, I just went really shy and anxious and it was just really warm and I, th I think by that point I was exhausted I was like I just want to go home but I've paid for the whole gig so I'm staying for the whole gig 
but uh, yeah knife bride really great and then scene queen came on and she was fantastic she has a great stage presence she's also really really funny she she only has like nine songs in total and she played pretty much all of them which was great i was wondering because i tried to check on setlist fm before the gig like what she was going to play what order and stuff and some of the songs weren't listed i know some people don't update the thing fully but i was like oh she's not playing like one of my favorite songs which is pink dress during though to be fair all of her songs are my favorite because she's only got nine of them <laughs> but she was great she played everything apart from two songs um, and she did a cover of like Hester Girl as well, which was really, gro really great. And she kept coming to the crowd quite a lot. And at one point she came right up to me and she held my hand. And I was just like, what the fuck? She also saw me quite a lot. Like we made a lot of eye contact and she could see me like literally singing every single line of every single song. I hope she was impressed. Um, she was absolutely fantastic. I I was just in awe. She was great. Um, I was hoping to get a set list afterwards because they were giving them out. Sadly, I didn't get one. The, there was a guy next to me who, who got it instead. Um, but I asked him if I could take a photo of it and he was a bit confused. Probably, why would you want to take a photo? I wanted to see it. I wanted to see it. So I, I took a photo of it. For me, more than anything, you know, I, I think if I'd had the physical thing, I might have thrown it away eventually. But I, I, I have a photo of it, so. But the little notes on it are so cute to help her remember, like, what she needed to, to say between songs and stuff. I thought that was really cute. Um, so then, then they they picked up. Um, she said she was going to meet people after the show, but I I didn't get the chance to see her. I don't know if she changed her mind or if she went and was going to do it at the merch table. But I, I hung about for a little bit, and then I thought I have to go out. Like it's too warm. And there's loads of people kind of going in the same direction, so you kind of get dragged along with the crowd. And I, I stood outside for a little bit, but she didn't come outside either. So I, th I think if she was meeting people, she would have been at the merch table, but sadly, like, I, I left. I had to go catch my train as well. So I didn't get the chance to meet her, sadly, but maybe next time. Yeah, so I moved to the back of the room for Wargasm, because by that point it was really hot, it was really humid in the venue. It was O2 Academy in Birmingham, in the smaller room in o Academy 2. I don't think they had any air conditioning in there, which is ridiculous, but I think they do that to make people buy more drinks. I used to work for O2 quite a while ago and it was always really warm in our venue and it would encourage people to buy more drinks, but it was ridiculous. I went to the bathroom at one point where it was really cool. It was great in there and I came back out and my glasses steamed up and I couldn't see a thing. <laughs> I was walking around with them like this because I couldn't see and I didn't want to break them. But Wargasm were really, really good. They're a little bit heavier than the kind of music I generally listen to, but they were really great. They have a great energy, all, all the vibes. I loved it. It was just a great time. Um, and I bought some merch. I, it's hard to show you because I'm really short. I bought a Scene Queen shirt and I could not read what it said at the time. I thought it said Scene Queen, um, but after deciphering the unreadable text it says twerkle pit which is a reference to one of her songs anything she does at her shows where instead of a circle pit you have a twerkle pit where you twerk in the pit i did not do that because i wasn't giving up my spot at the barrier <laughs> for a circle pit but it was it was great and it goes really great with my new kill star avril lavigne joggers <laughs> uh, so that was the show um and I went home and I'm exhausted today. So that was last night. Let's give you a reading update because I've not done that since the, I started Horror Store, I think. So I started Horror Store. I'm now 150 pages in. Um, I'm really, really enjoying it. It is really funny, but also it's starting to get really scary um, and also really gross. So Grady Hendrix does great visuals for disgusting shit. He's great at describing stuff. But yeah, it's also, it's really funny as well. Like the first, like if you've worked in retail, you will totally relate to this. I worked in retail very briefly and I hated it. And the management that I described in this, other colleagues, we had all of that. I hated all of them <laughs> and it was so good. So I can relate so much to this. And then there's also the horror side of it as well, though it has taken quite a long time in the book to start getting scary, but I feel like now, that the scary things are happening, it is really going to amp it up very, very quickly. So I'm very excited about this. I'm hoping I will finish it by Friday. I don't have a lot left. It's only like 240 something pages. So I have about 100 pages to go. Um, I definitely think I'm gonna finish it by Friday um, night. I, I would probably read quite a lot today. So yeah, but I've only been reading this 
of an evening because uh, I didn't want to take it to work because of the size of it. Um, so I did my Twitter poll for my trick or treat book that I was going to take with me on my commute and these were the results. So the winner was Moon Cakes, which was the cake. So I started that. I don't know how many pages in. Oh, I'm 140 pages in. So I, I normally read graphic novels quite quickly, but because I've only been reading it while I've been going to and from work, I, I like haven't made that much progress, but I'm really enjoying this one as well. It's really cute. Like the story's not overly complicated. It's like a fantasy plotline. But it's it's mainly about the relationship between Tam and Nova, who are these two characters. So Nova is a deaf witch. She wears hearing aids, which I didn't realize on the cover but you can see them um so she, she is deaf and then tam is a werewolf and they are non-binary and they were childhood friends and they've been reconnected uh as this demon is like in the woods near where nova lives and nova lives with her two grandmas i'm not sure if they're like the parents like the, the mom of both of her mom and her dad or if they are like gay grandmas <laughs> it's not been specified but her grandmas are great it's just a really cute story um it's mostly about their friendship and their romance rather than the fantasy plot that is going on but um i'm really loving it the artwork is adorable i would love to read more from wendy Shu, who is the illustrator because her art style is fantastic but it's it's just starting to get to quite a dramatic point in the story which I'm, I'm very excited to see how it's going to end so hopefully i will finish this by the end of the week as well um if i finish horror store really quickly i will just read this at home as well and start something else i really do want to read delicates this week as well because it will count towards wave three though obviously you can kind of extend the wave as you need to so i might stay on wave three when wave four starts just to finish delicate so that i can get the graphic novel prompt points as well so that's what i've been reading um i've been having a great week though i definitely think they're they're going to be five stars very high fours if not um and then last night i got home and i had a amazon parcel waiting for me um which apparently is my actual Spoopathon gift exchange book. Something's been going on with Elster where I, I sent a message to the person I was assigned to say, here's your tracking info. I've had to order it through Book Depository instead of Amazon. And then I got a message from Katie to say like, you messaged me about this, but I didn't send it to Kate. I sent it to Emily, who was the person I was assigned. And then Katie was like, I'm the person gifting to you. It was all a bit weird. I don't know what's been going on with Elfster. Clearly the messages are getting mixed up by like person assigned to and stuff. So that was a bit strange. But I obviously got a book last week that issue was for Spoopathon uh, from Catherine. So thank you, Catherine. I don't know where that book has come from. I don't know if you would ordered it from a previous exchange and obviously because it was a pre-order it had only just arrived or what. But thank you very much, Catherine. Uh, for the bonus book but here's the other book that I've, I've gotten off Katie um and she said happy spoopathon and a little ghost emoji and obviously this is Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb which I'd recently put back on my wish list I had it on there a while before but I took it off because I thought I'm not ready to start this this massive realm of the elderlings yet but i feel like maybe next year i'm gonna start it and um, so i've got the first book assassin's apprentice which is the first book in the farseer trilogy which is the first trilogy in the realm of the elderlings i somehow managed to miss the read-along that catch up book club did over the last couple of years i joined in with the game of thrones one and then i fell off the bandwagon at around book five because I was at university and I couldn't keep up with the schedule and then I think I missed the announcement for the, the Realm of the Elderlings and because it's such a massive uh, connected universe thing with lots of following on series I think it was just too much for me to handle but I think what I would like to do is try and read one of the the smaller series in the Realm of the Elderlings each year for, for the next few years so 2023 we're going to start with the Farseer trilogy and then maybe 2024 I'll read the next one and so on and so forth. I'm not much of a binge reader. I find it hard to stick to a schedule where you read like one book a month in a series if I don't have like a read along to keep up with. I'm only managing with By the Angel along because it's got a set schedule whereas if I set the schedule for myself I just won't stick to it. So I'm hoping to start this next year then. It's obviously one of the shorter books in the series. It was a lot smaller than I was expecting but I know that they get significantly longer. 
and they're like a thousand pages long but i'm very excited to start this i don't really know too much about it other than this is following fitz who is the bastard son of a king and then he gets trained up as the like royal assassin and i know that the whole of the realm of the elderlings pretty much spans his life like three of the trilogies follow him specifically um, and like he's very young in this book and then by the like last book he's like in his 60s or something um, and everything that I know about Realm of the Elderlings is just because of watching Becca and the Books' vlogs and also her guide to the series as well as she did quite recently so thank you Katie I can't wait to start this next year um it's going to be a wild ride. I realise this update has been going on very, very long, so I will let you get on with the rest of the video and I will get on with my day. I've got my study day today. I've got a meeting this morning and then after that, I'm going to try and do some work, but I feel like it's going to be mostly me sitting there half asleep because I'm exhausted. I have no idea how I'm going to go to work on Halloween the day after the prerequisite gig because I'm going to be in pain. And I'm gonna be very tired. so tired i am still recovering from the scene queen gig on wednesday it's friday i felt awful yesterday like, i was so tired all day and i felt okay today and then when i got home i was just ready to collapse and I'm finally in bed so last night i finished not last night just yesterday in general i finished mooncakes i gave it four stars because i um i really enjoyed it and i really love how diverse it is and i think the artwork is gorgeous but i felt like the pacing was a little bit weird and everything seemed to happen really really quickly i don't know if it's just because it is a graphic novel so it is obviously shorter in terms of words i don't know but I don't know, I definitely feel like it could have been maybe like a duology rather than just one graphic novel and things could have been spaced out a little bit. There is like a bit of a time skip in here where um, you sort of very briefly see two weeks of the character's relationship develop um, and it's only in a few panels whereas it would have been nice to see that dragged out a little bit. So that's why I gave it four stars. So, um, ooh. There was just a fly in my ear. Disgusting. I did find out as well, the grandmas are gay, gay grandmas. There, there was a panel where they were in bed asleep together and a photo on their wall was of them kissing and holding hands, which was really cute. So that was really cool as well. So you not only have a queer relationship between Tam and Nova, um, you also got Tam being non-binary and you've got gay grandmas as well, which is awesome. So it's really, really diverse. If you're looking for a very diverse, fun, cute book, the artwork is gorgeous. Um, and the colouring as well is brilliant. Yeah, I just I just wasn't really a fan of of the pacing of the plot and everything. Um it was it was a high four stars. Um I feel like it would have been more like a four point five. Um, but it was very very good i read a little bit more of horror store as well last night miraculously i was very tired so 
I don't know how I managed to read anything, but I've now only got about 50 pages left of this. So I'm going to try and finish that tonight and I will update you tomorrow with like what I rated it and my thoughts and everything because I'm I'm going to probably read it before I, and then, before I go to sleep and then, and then I'll go to sleep. Uh, and then so this morning I started Delicates by Brenna Thumler, which is the sequel to Sheets. And in Sheets, we follow Marjorie, who uh, is kind of looking after her family's la laundry place. Um, she's only like 12 years old and her mum has recently died. Her dad is really depressed. So she is kind of trying to keep the business afloat by herself. And she meets this little ghosty here, who is Wendell. And the two kind of strike up a little bit of a friendship. And in this one, we are following Marjorie again as she is starting eighth grade. She has this new friendship group, but she doesn't really particularly like because they're all quite shallow. Um, she's still friends with Wendell as well, but there's this other girl who is called Liza and she is a little bit weird. She's a little bit awkward uh, and kind of Marjorie's friendship group really make fun of her and Marjorie doesn't want to be associated with Liza because she thinks she's a bit weird and she also doesn't want to seem uncool in front of her friends and also her crush. But the thing about Liza is she believes in ghosts. She's obsessed with ghosts. So um, that's one of the reasons why they think she's a bit weird. So I feel like what's going to happen is Wendell will start revealing himself, I guess, to Liza and she will find out ghosts really do exist. I am enjoying it, but it's very different to the first one. Uh, the story is completely different and I do feel like it's a little bit of an unnecessary sequel because it doesn't really have anything to do with the first one. So far the focus has very much been about Marjorie and the coming of age story rather than Wendell as a ghost. What I liked about the first one is that Wendell was a very much a main character where he's he's a little bit background in this one um and you see less of the ghost world as well like the, there's there's still the ghosts in it but like in the first book you see the ghost world itself where the ghosts kind of live um now that they're dead um and like it's it's lost all of the mysterious supernatural paranormal aspect of it that i really enjoyed in the first book um, whereas this one is it's very much a contemporary setting like it's just like real life it's not contemporary because it's set in the 90s which would mean it's technically historical fiction I'm sorry if that makes anyone feel really old um, but it is good and I'm liking it it's just very different and not the kind of story I'm that interested in but I think it would be really good for a teenage audience especially so I think the problems I'm having with it is mainly just because I'm not the target audience but at the same time it's although it's about teenagers it doesn't feel like a teen YA book it's still kind of a little bit mature in the subject matter and the tone of it I mean less so this one because this is very much about the middle school experience but the first book deals really really heavily with like death and, and suicide and it's quite a heavy topic like mental health and everything so it's it was very heavy the first book but this one's a little bit more light-hearted um but there's no comical villain in this one which I'm, I'm quite enjoying um so i'll probably try and finish that tomorrow because i just don't have the energy to try and read two books right now i'm, I'm 156 pages into delicates so a little bit like i'm about halfway through so i could probably finish it tomorrow i read this on the, my way to work this morning and also on my lunch break so i'm at work tomorrow again so i definitely think that i will be able to finish it tomorrow if not at work then afterwards but tomorrow i will start the next vlog because that's the start of the last week of the spoopathon start of wave four which is crazy it's come around so quick but i'm gonna go now i'm gonna go and try and finish horror store and then I will update you tomorrow and wrap up the vlog. Hello friends, it is Saturday again and I am just very quickly going to wrap up the vlog. I did finish Horror Store last night. I've decided I'm going to rate it four stars but it's kind of a low four. Um, I really enjoyed it. I feel like the atmosphere was great, the writing was great but the characters I couldn't quite connect with too much. I didn't particularly 
like well now that i'm saying this i'm kind of re questioning um how i felt about the characters because actually i do think they were done really well especially basil at the start with being a really annoying manager so maybe the characters actually were done pretty well but i couldn't connect with them but i didn't need to connect with them because it wasn't that kind of story so maybe i would in i might increase my core pal rating for the characters but i still think it's going to be within the four star bracket um it was mainly the plot and the ending i wasn't 100% with. I feel like it got, it, it took too long to get into the scariness of Orsk and with the prison and everything and then the ending as well. I feel like I didn't quite like the way it ended. It felt, I don't know, it just felt a bit weird. So it's a four star. I liked it. I'm very pleased to have read my first Grady Hendrix. I've been wanting to read this for years now so I'm glad that I've finally done that and I will definitely be picking up more from him. Uh, I have my best friend's exorcism so maybe I'll try and read that before the end of the year as well because I have had that for quite a while. I bought that one first and then I bought this one this year. But yeah, I really Really, really enjoyed horror store i definitely recommend for my first grady hendrix it was a nice dip into his writing style um i enjoyed the way he tied in the comedy with the gore with the disgusting gross descriptions and the horror as well so i'm interested to see more from him um so that was my last book of the week um i am going to wrap up the vlog and then I'm probably going to do the opening clip of next week's vlog as well. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this week and seeing what I got up to. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below how your week three of Spoopathon has went. If you haven't already and you would like to be, please do consider subscribing. I post a new video every single week and I'll see you guys very soon with a new video. Bye!